Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Rehabilitation Sciences YouTube channel. Uh, we are here with a very important topic today. This is all we talk about fascia and other uh, things and uh, relative instrument which um, you know, for fascia release and all that. Uh, the topic or today is the importance of fascia exploration and instrumental treatment. And we have with us uh, today, Dr. Uh, uh, Stephen, and he'll be talking about this uh, topic. Uh, Dr. Stephen, uh, we would like to have your consent for making your lecture live on YouTube, sir. Yes, you have it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for giving your consent. And we have with us uh, moderator today, Dr. Harpreet Singh. Uh, he'll formally introduce our faculty today and we'll start the session. Dr. Harpreet, please, you can go ahead. A very good evening to the presenter, uh, Mr. Stephen Richelli. Uh, he is a, a physiotherapist and an osteopath, uh, is also the creator of Richelli's facial quadrant system method. Uh, he is also the creator of Richelli's manual instrumental therapy tools and uh, is also a professor of ma a master of instrumental therapies at UCJC University. Uh, we welcome you, uh, Mr. Stefan, and uh, we welcome all the participants for uh, this lecture today. Thank you so much. Good afternoon for everybody. And uh, thanks so much to be here again with you. Okay, we're going to speak about uh, therapy tools and manual therapy. Uh, it's something that is not something new. Uh, we'll explain it a little bit later. But normally it's uh, not common that people use tools uh, when they speak or when they talk about manual therapy. And we will see how important it is, and especially when we make uh, fascia treatments, and how important it is to make a good exploration in fascia and to treat it right with a good tool. So let's see what you know, a fast introduction of what is fascia. What fascia, the fascia system wrapped the whole body. Everything is wrapped by, by fascia, connective uh, tissue. It interconnects everything. So it, it is impossible to make any kind of treatment in the body uh, and not have an influence or direct influence on the fascia system. So it's important to know uh, how it works and which is the compression of, of fascia. Well, uh, the basic components of the connective tissue or fascia tissue is the collagen fibers. It gives the stiffness to this uh, tissue because you can you don't can stretch it you don't can compress it but you can flex it mm -hmm. but uh, it gives a stiffness to the tissue it is combined on in relationship directly with the elastin fibers which gives the elasticity uh, to this tissue in, and depending about the balance between collagen fibers and elastin fibers uh, the connective tissue change is um, a specific um, uh, function in the body because we have some parts in the, in the body which are more uh, flexible and other they are more stiff. So depending on about the, the balance between both uh, fibers, we have one kind of connective tissue or another one. This is very important. Uh, to have a good distance between uh, these fibers, we have the fundamental system that's like a lubricant uh, inside the connective tissue, which allows the good sliding between the different fascia levels, uh, fascia tissues, and also inside the connective tissue. Uh, tissue. It, um, it allows a, a good distance between the fibers, and if the quality or the quantity of this uh, fundamental system is not um, enough, uh, the fibers comes together, have more friction and this in, in, in mix uh, to increase the, the creation of new uh, collagen fibers, especially, and that makes this um, connecti uh, connective uh, tissue more, uh, more dense, um, too much com compacted, and this uh, loss of mobility. It goes stiffer and loss is um, uh, physiological uh, mobility. So we have to ensure that the quantity of collagen fibers are the right one for the function of each part of the body. Well, um, to make it very easy to understand, we have the skin in the superficial, then we have the superficial fascia interconnected with the retinaculum, which are collagen fibers, uh, to the deep fascia also connected with collagen fibers and the deep fascia with the muscle. Uh, this allows an independence of movement in the deep, uh, on the deepest layers of the, the 
um, the tissues inside the body and the upper uh, uh, layer. So when we are moving a muscle, we don't see that the, the skin is moving on the same time and the superficial. So it gives, gives independence. <clears throat> but if we have too much collagen fibers or in, in bad orientation of this fiber, which don't allow a, a good movement in all direction, we have a too strong interconnection about the superficial and the uh, deepest layers. And especially in the superficial, we have the most mobility or when we are moving uh, our body where we move more is in superficial. So if there's a restriction of movement between the layers, we have an, an, an input from the superficial to the deepest side and we can change the, the muscle tonus in, in this way because we are stretching too much and the muscle and, and the muscle spi uh, spinous. And so we increase or decrease, depending on if we stretch too much or we compress too much, uh, this muscle spinal. And so we can change the muscle uh, tonus, which is very important. So through the skin, through the fascia system, we can change the, um, the muscle tonus. Well, fascia, how I said, is everywhere in the body and all the system has to go through the fascia system, the blood system, the nerve system, everything goes through, through the fascia. So it's very important to know how to interact with the fascia system. Well, uh, which kind of problems we can have with the fascia? Uh, fascia change uh, in the thickness. And so uh, if it is uh, thicker than normal, we have uh, less mobility. We say that it's stiffer than the normal. If we have changing in concentration and orientation of the fibers. So it's very important if we have a movement in one specific uh, uh, direction, if the fibers have not the, the right orientation, the movement in this direction will be disturbed or will be not functional. So we have a decrease of mobility. This will increase uh, more forces or, or, or more uh, input in other parts that can be damaged or overuse and then uh, produce an, an pathology. So it's very important that we have the right orientation and um, the concentration of, of fibers. Also, in other um, alteration of the fundamental systems, uh, this is the lubricate in this fascia system. It is not good lubricated. It also is the movement is, is uh, not so good and, and don't allow a good sliding between the different levels and also reduce the, the quiet or the right mobility between the different fascia levels. And are the uh, adhesion between different planes or cross links? If we have just fibers and we have a good orientation, they move very uh, well. But if we have fibers that are connected, they don't can uh, have this good movement uh, that they have when they are uh, without connection. So it's very important that we don't have these cross links inside the, the fascia system, and we have to reduce this this function of of the fascia system with our tools. It's very difficult to diagnostic uh, well the fascia system because we, there are not diagnostic tools that give us the in right information only for the big fascias like thoracolumbar fascia, fascia lata, or, or the fascia of the foot. There we can see an, an alteration of thickness, but normally the uh, fascias are very uh, thin and we are talking about sometimes of uh, less than one millimeter, so it's very difficult to see it by, by the diagnostic or radio diagnostic. Uh, with heat uh, cameras, we can see an alteration of, of uh, temperature in the body, which can indicate there's a restriction and that uh, increase the, the temperature, but it's not a specific uh, tool to diagnostic. A fascia alteration. So we have to listen. Uh, well, first we have to see which kind of fascia can be alterated in one specific area, depending on the movement, which is uh, or have changes in, in the mobility of the, the patient. We have also to listen what the patient indicates of what tension or what kind of uh, stiffness he feels in his body. And also we have to see which kind of technique or specific technique we have to apply depending on which fascia is alterated and which kind of uh, well, patterns or, or what kind of problems indicates that the patient has or which kind of uh, well, what he feels really huh, the patient. The connective tension, uh, <laughs> the connective tissue adapt his tension depending on um, his function. So if we have a good mobility, uh, one patient that moves uh, every day and makes complete movement in all directions with arms and with legs, with mm -hmm. everything, uh, normally all the fibers are good, have good orientation to allow all kinds of uh, mobility. 
But if you have a patient that's the whole day sitting and don't make, um, well, well, he never lift up his arm, he never turn his, his chest to right and left. So the fibers just orientated in the movement, they are uh, solicitated. So they don't move or don't are orientated in movements that they never do. So we have an alteration of a fun functionality of this tissue, which don't allow movement that they never do. So it's very important that the patient are moving and also in our treatments, we have to introduce movement during the treatment. And also after the treatment, the patient has to do his exercises to increase the mobility and, and give information to the tissue in which direction this collagen fibers have to orientate. Well, we can have in, well, we have to work on three kinds of uh, dysfunction in, in, in the fascia system. First of one is at, at a cellular level. We can uh, have an input on the fibroblast, which are the, the cells which produce this collagen fibers and elastin fibers. So we can increase the production of this kind of fibers. We also can change or have an input about the orientation uh, of these fibers to allow a, a good movement in a good direction. And also we have a good input in the fundamental system, which is maybe the, the quickest one, uh, uh, the quickest result that we have. Because if we make uh, the silurican better, uh, more fluid, we have a better movement between the different uh, fascia levels. And this allows a better mobility. So this is the quick effect or the magic effect of uh, instrumented manual therapy. Uh, and then in, in the later uh, step, we have these changes of orientation of the fibers and the increase of production of the fibers, but all have to go together. And uh, specific the, the mechanical action that we have is traction, compression, flexion, shear forces, and torsion. All this increase the production of, of fibers and also uh, indicates the, this kind of fibers in which direction they have to go. But only treating once a week or, or twice is not enough input for in what concerns of information to this fiber. So uh, we have to combine it ever, ever, ever with uh, with mobility or mobility exercises at home. Well, especially we have to make a mobilization between different planes of fascia uh, tissue to allow to reduce this cross links, which are fluid and don't allow good movement of this fibers. So normally what we are doing uh, when we make manual therapy, uh, we use oils or or creams about the skin to slide well or about the skin, but it's right, it's just the thing that we don't have to do. We have to stretch the skin, that they, the, the skin stretch the retinaculum, which connects the skin to the superficial fascia and that to the deep fascia and that to the muscle, to increase the mobility and to reduce this cross link. So that we only can do if we really stretch the skin. And why we have to do use a, a tool and not a hand, because the hand, if we make a long friction or, or or a quick friction about the, the skin. It's not good for our hands. It's a little bit painful or in, in discomfort and also for the patient. So a, a tool which allows a good sliding, but on the same time, a good stretching of the skin will increase uh, well, a lot uh, the incidence or the effectivity of, of our treatments. Also, we have to stimulate all the mechanical receptors well, we can make a superficial friction with our tools, a very quick one, which it gives a um, higher stimulation of the um, nerve ends that will adapt uh, faster and reduce the, the input of pain. Well, you, you, you know it when you'll be hidden and then you make a, a fast movement, it decreases the, the pain that you feel. So this same effect, we can use it and, and and instrumented uh, therapy to reduce the sensibility of uh, very stressed or very acute uh, tissues to go uh, after deeper because normally this, uh, the sensitivity is too high and superficial and don't allow us to go deep inside the tissue. So we can use techniques that reduce the, the sensitivity and superficial to allow us uh, later to go deep. And also all the mechanic receptors, if the skin is under a too big tension and um, this able 
the information or give a bad, um, bad a wrong uh, information uh, of the sensors, which are stressed. So they are stretched, they are stressed, and then they give an information. But this information that they give is not the information that they will give if the tissue is relaxed. So an increase of tension in superficial, especially in the uh, skin and in the superficial fascia where all the uh, nerve ends are, uh, can uh, uh, um, or change our perception of of proprioception, um, um, ah, sorry, my English, proprioception, or the, the idea that our body has about in which position we really are. So, uh, um, my, the people say, oh, why do you have the head? So, no, my head is straight. My head, uh, the patient think that his head is here, but in reality, it is here. This is why the information that the, the receptor is giving is wrong because there's an animal tension that disturbs the, the imagine that the patient has of, of his own. So we have to reduce or change uh, the tension to allow the, the receptors to give it right, uh, uh, right information. So another blood and fluid restriction. Uh, when we reduce the, when we make a big compression with our tools, which uh, normally when they are stiff, they are also a, a higher compression than we, when we use our hand, which are not so, so stiff. And when we uh, combine, combine it with movement of, of the patient, of the muscle uh, movement, we have a blood restriction in this area. This will increase first the, the, the reaction of the fast fibers of the muscle. So with a lower uh, stress or a lower uh, wave, in lower reputation, we have a bigger um, reaction of the fast fiber, which allows us uh, to have a bigger uh, muscle uh, building. Also, this uh, restriction of blood flow will increase the acid lactic, which increase uh, the, the, um, the raw hormones and also uh, uh, the producing of new blood vessel and the dilatation of this blood pressure. So we have a higher uh, apport of nutritional products that will increase the metabolic and the production of muscular mass. And so when we have to, to do this, um, we also can uh, refill this, this area. If we make a good, a big compression, we press out all the fluids in, in this area. When we release this compression, new fluid comes inside the connective tissue and it cleans all the metabolic waste which can be uh, too much concentrated in this area, and especially when we talk about this disorientation or this bad orientation or too much uh, collagen fibers. Uh, so if we have like this, the fluid can go uh, between my fingers and can clean and remove everything. But if I put it too strong together, there's no space that the fluid can go through. So it can be that the metabolic waste uh, be there it makes more inflammation, more irritation of the fibroblasts. Fibroblasts produce more collagen fibers, more collagen fibers uh, are there. And then after this, we have so compacted tissue that the fluid don't can go through. And it's first, it's not functional in movement. And second, it's not functional in uh, uh, um, cleaning all the metabolic waste and having a good metabolic uh, uh, system there. Well, also with the mechanical stress that we give an input to our tissues, and especially when we can go very deep and, and, and to the lowest uh, tissues like muscles or other ones, we have an, a mechanical stress that the cells will uh, receive and have to uh, adapt to this mechanical stress. So they have we produce changes in, in, the, in the cells that uh, increase their metabolic and the uh, adaption to this uh, metabo metabolic stress and also mechanical stress. So they have to change. One example, if we, we go with a bicycle, maybe we, we don't feel comfortable when we're sitting too much time on, on the bike because we are not uh, using it so much. But if you use the bike each day after a few time, uh, well, we, we feel comfortable on, on the bicycle without pain and, and no part of the body. So the, 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 um, the body has adapted, all the cells have adapted to this new stress. But if we do it once a week or once a month, we have no changes in, in the cell. So it has to be something continuously. That's uh, again a matter why we have to make uh, our treatments one or two in the week and also explain the, the patient that he has to make exercises to give again 
uh, or to maintain the, the metabolic, well, the metabolic, the mechanical stress to the cells. We have a rupt of uh, macromolecules, the fundamental substances are protein changes, which when they are so long, they have no uh, free ends where they can capture water or fix water. So if we broke this um, uh, macromolecules of protein, they have more free ends where they can uh, fix water. So they make it more fluid. Under compression and friction and heat, uh, it, it was demonstrated that the, um, these changes can break easily and uh, fix more water. So this is the way how we can change the, the fundamental system, make it more fluid and allow a better uh, movement between the, the, the different fascia levels. And also this allows this quick uh, magic effect of uh, well, um, um, uh, increase of a range of motion. Uh, to release the fascia system, it's not only treating in on a lying position. I explain you that we have to move our patient, and the, the th therapy tools allows us to be um, no, to move us with the patient because they allows us to move us in all direction: right, left, up, down, in front, uh, behind, without changing our position. Well, this is something that you have to see uh, on in, in real time. It's very difficult to show with a with a picture. But really, the, the, uh, the therapy tools allows you to move you, yourself with the patient. And it's also very important because depending on which part of the, of the movement the pain appears, it's just the part where, we are, you, where you have to do your treatment and not in a relaxing position because the fibers in this position are not functional. And just in this position is where you have to make your, your treatment. So it's very important to find out in which position, in which movement, and how um, much more movement you do and in all the movement you ap uh, apply your, your treatment, it will be more efficient than if you do it only in a relaxed position. So better in, in the position where he feels the stiffness or, or the re uh, restriction of movement and much better if you, the patient is moving his arm and he is, you are treating just the point where he feels more, more stiffness. So this is uh, more easier to do also with therapy tools. So we have to analyze our patient in, in movement because we have to see, find out the asymmetry in, in movement in our patient. We have to analyze his position. We have to analyze his movement in standing, sitting, and lying position. And well, the theory of the suit. We have a nice picture of a cadaver and with his suit on, on his side. And sometimes I make jokes uh, that I'm not a physical therapist, you know, I am a tailor. And what I really try to do is to adjust his suit to his body that he can move uh, well. Because you can imagine if you have a suit that is too short in one part, you don't move well. So if I give you a good suit and it's comfortable to, to wear, you feel well and you can move uh, quite well. So we have to find out where's the tension, especially in superficial, how I told you, because in superficial is where we have more movement. And we have to use the skin and move the skin to uh, decrease the stiffness between the different levels and allow a good uh, or independence movement about the superficial and the, the deep parts of, of the body. And we have to use tools to move the skin, to move the skin better, uh, from good uh, stretch of the, of, the, um, of the skin, but without uh, well, making damage on, on the skin. So we have to find out which is the best tool to uh, use. We use all kinds of movement, as much more movements we, we find out and, and feel, or the patient explain where he feels his stiffness. This will give us the most information, and especially when we find that different, very different movements uh, give us the stiffness in the same point. Uh, this will indicate us uh, very clear where the most uh, alterated point in the body is. First of all, the more stiffness, where he feels more stiffness, then the parts where he feels more time stiffness with different movements. And at least we can compare it also with the posture that he has in, in a relaxed position. So all together give us the point where we have to start and they can be very, very far from the pathology uh, from that has the patient. One example, he has some shoulder problem and maybe the, the problem is on his legs. His leg or his quadriceps, the skin about the quadriceps is too short and don't allow it in a rotation and there's 
is transmitted to all his front chest to the shoulder and then he feels uh, a pain but maybe releasing the quadriceps this tension disappears the the suit is no tension and he can move better his arm so if the pain disappears in his arm problem is resolved we don't have to treat the, the shoulder but what well, this is another stuff okay now we go uh, directly to to the therapy tools why we have to use um, uh, therapy tools in in what in fascia system, but I think that we have to use uh, therapy tools in all kinds of techniques when we are working or we are talking about manual therapy. So what does the use of tools brings us? So it allows us the correct um, technique in each time because normally we are limited in, in time and in strength. I think about when you are working eight hours a day and maybe the last patient comes one very strong no, with very big muscles and ah, your fingers are like this, uh, yeah, you're very tired and you have to make a, a strong work. So the tool allows you no limit in, in time, applicate in any kind of, of technique. It, it don't, doesn't matter if it's a strong training you know, or the light track technique. And also the force you, you need to do this technique is not limited because the, 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 the tool um, makes your force maybe duplicated by, by 10 or even more. Mm -hmm. it, it improves also the ergonomics from the physical therapist. Normally, it allows us a better uh, position. We don't have to be so much flexed. We, we, we don't have to change our torsion so much. We can move in all directions. So we're working with also the therapist is working with his back muscle, front muscle, side muscles. And normally when we are making marrow therapy, we work more with the front side and after time, we are like this, no, with a, <laughs> a round shoulder. No? So it's not so good for us uh, to work in bad position. So if we have a better ergonomic, uh, which allows us a tool, it would be better for our health. And if we are working well, we will, where we will work better with our patient. And another good thing is that the therapy tools allows us to work on uh, stuff, uh, on, on uh, on bandages and on clothes, which is normally not easy to do with the hand, especially when we go uh, cross over, not on long strikes on, where's my mouse? When we go long strikes, okay, we can do it also with the hand over the, the bandage. It's not, um, well, it's not like something likely for, for the hand, but we can do it, okay. But if we go uh, from side to side over the, the kinesio tape or other tapes, we re remove it from the skin. And with the therapy tools, it's very, very difficult. I, I also, in all the courses, I say, if you can remove it with the tool, I give you the, my tools as a present. I give it for free. If you are able to remove in, in, in kinesio, kinesio, kinesio tape on all, any kind of bandage with, with the tool, it slides over and it don't remove it. So you can combine the techniques of kinesio taping and manual therapy uh, without removing it completely from the skin, which will also damage the, the skin because if you glue it re um, and remove it, glue it and remove it, it, it will irritate the, the skin. And also on sport uh, bandages, like in, if you have an ankle sprain, uh, you can work on, on the on the bandage and increasing the results uh, before you remove the, the bandage. So normally you wait a few times or a few days to remove the, the bandage and then you make your treatment. So you can start your treatment with the bandage on. And also if you don't can this, uh, take out the clothes of the patient, you can treat it. And especially this is very good in sport events. Uh, I work at a lot in, in tennis. And in tennis, well, you have two minutes to treat your, your tennis player on, on, on the field. And if you have to remove the clothes, you have to go, well, you go with the, uh, how do you say, the, the person who looks about the match. No? Uh, he goes with you in, in, in the room and uh, well, that you can dis uh, take out the clothes of the, of the player and treat him. But if it's a cold place, uh, well, he is sweating. He goes inside, he gets cold, then he treated two minutes and he goes uh, again to the field. It, uh, then when he starts, he's cold and maybe he has uh, again uh, the, the same pain for what you are treating. So if you can treat it right there uh, on, on his clothes when it's necessary, it will 
uh, increase or will make the, the results more better than if you have to wait too much time when he, he gets called. So especially in sport and also what I said, if you can go very deep uh, in the tissue, you can make a good compression, which makes the uh, fundamental system to more fluid and allows a better uh, movement between the tissue. This allows also a better function and also you have a high input with the deep uh, compression and this very slow movements about the muscle tonus. So you, you have an input of the muscle spenders, you can decrease the, the, uh, the strength of the muscle spenders and reduce the muscle tonus. So after, or even less than one, uh, one minute, you have reduced the contraction of this muscle and allow the, the player to continue his, his match. So in sport events, it's very, very uh, useful to, to manage it with therapy tools. But we don't can use any kind of tool because if we are working on a basketball player, okay, we can use a big tool, but it is the same big, big tool that we're using on the basketball player on, on his shoulder. We don't can use it on his hand because if we have a very uh, fine ligament or, or some kind of problem in a very small structure, we need well, one more specific uh, tool that allows you to uh, go directly to, to this position. So we have to choose the right tool for each kind of technique that we will use. But why the physical therapists don't have a tool or don't use tools? Because each kind of profession has this tool. It's very common for doctors, for mechanics, for, for any, any kind of works. They have a specific tool that represents the, his, his work. But in physical therapy, well, during your uh, academic training, you, you never hear nothing about uh, instrumented manual therapy or using tools in manual therapy because manual therapy is manual therapy. You only can use your hands, so nothing more, please, please. So why? No, because in physical therapy, they, <coughs> sorry, they show you how to use electrotherapy. They show you how to use uh, kinesio taping. They show you uh, shock waves or other things. That is all uh, well accepted by why is it not accepted to use therapy tools in manual therapy? Mm -hmm. And why just the hands of the therapy of the physical therapists are his symbol? No, physical therapy is hands. Why is it not a therapy tool? Mm -hmm. So let's see. What is manual therapy? Manual therapy is using the hands to explore uh, the body or the, the pain or the problem of the patient and use the hands to resolve this, this problem. But it's sure that you have seen it or experimented that you have a specific limitation of each joint. So sometimes specific techniques hurts your own hands or hurt, hurts your shoulder when you're working too hard or your, your back. So also the texture of the hand is um, sometimes too soft because if you want to go deep inside or we want to make a cross friction, we, it's not... Mm, as a sin, it makes no sin to use something that is not as stiff. Why are we using something that it's like, well, like our hands is different, my minutes don't uh, hold his position. So, better you to use something that is stiff. We have also the muscular fatigue, our fatigue when we are working too much hours or we have, when we're making heavy uh, um, work on our. Uh, Patient. Also, all the uh, possible orthopedic deformation of our hands. There are many people that have a hip laxitude, especially uh, more women. But I, I have a guy working with me that can put his thumb like like this. And he can fold it like this. So imagine how difficult for him to hold his hands in the right position to, to applicate all, all the techniques. So even if you have an accident with your hand and you have some limitation or some pain or you cut your finger, well, with a therapy tool you can work. Uh, and it doesn't matter that you have some stress or problems in, in your hands. Hmm? And also uh, to carry out a constant um, pressure with when we make pain, like when we make an, a trigger point, and we need a good slip and drug on the skin. What we thought we have to use the skin as a K to enter in, in the body. And we don't can use oil or creams. So we need a therapy tool that works well as light on the skin but on the same time stretch uh, uh, enough in the skin to uh, stretch this retinaculum that stretch from the superficial fashion then the deep fashion then to the muscle mm -hmm. it's very important so also we have a problem of sensitivity of our patient 
Imagine the psoas muscle, if you want to make a reduction of tension, we have to go very deep in the problem that uh, God gives us uh, uh, fingers that are not all the same long. So to put them all on the same level and to uh, distribute the, the pressure on the same way will be very difficult. Uh, at the end, one or other finger will come front and this will make more compression on one specific point and as smaller the contact point is as more painful it normally is especially when we go deep a therapy tool that allows you a high uh, superficial or um, uh, same level uh, superficial that is continuous and the, the same will uh, distribute the pressure uh, on all the superficial and while the superficial is uh, bigger the pain that the patient feels is less and normally with the same compression it is more comfortable to use in tool than the hands of the therapist and also the nails even if they are very small they will also normally hurt and let some uh, well imagine on, on the skin so better to use this uh, tool also and the modesty of the patient can be an obstacle, especially a woman's on the breath. It's not the same to touch them with the hand. Maybe a woman can touch the breath of another woman, but maybe if it's a man that has to treat the breath of a woman, they, will, they don't really feel so comfortable uh, with this. So if you use a tool on the skin and the, the woman see that you are using a tool, that the tool is which is contacting the skin of her breath, she maybe don't feel so discomfortable or has less modesty than if you're using your hands or also on, on the pubis when you go very close to a ligament, uh, well, even if it's a man or a woman, it's not a place when it's a man is something <laughs> in, in, in the middle that disturbs your, your techniques and if it's a woman, she also don't feel so comfortable. So if you're using a tool in, in this area, this is maybe more comfortable for the patient and sometimes also more for, for the therapist. So we have to take care of our hands, sure, because we only have two and we have them for all our life. So uh, one of the things that I see with 30 years that my fingers goes uh, <laughs> to the wrong direction, that they're not straight, they're going to, to the side. So I said, oh, when I'm going to work all my life with my hand and with the same way that I'm using them, I don't will go very old with my hand. So uh, before I make an, <laughs> uh, take out my hands and put me in some hands like, like this, you can see on, on the picture, but maybe it's uh, more useful to, to use a tool. So it's not a new concept because 3000 years before Jesus Christ, well, there are papers that demonstrated that, well, especially in China, they use it as uh, tools uh, to, uh, to release trigger points and to make a uh, digital punta and make massage, massage with it. So it's quite, uh, well, I don't know how to explain why they are using more than 3000 years tools and nowadays in fifth secret therapy we don't using it no? so a little bit crazy and there are many 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 tools but maybe all are this known and well uh, which are the most popular tool or which are the most um, well, functional tools so we have to see it we have three different materials. We can find tools in metal, wood, and plastic. And for me, plastic is the best one because it glides very well, uh, very well, uh, stretching also the skin. But we have to be careful about it because all, not all plastic are the same. Uh, my tools use a specific plastic, which is like Teflon, which allow a good sliding, but on the same time stretching the pen, but they don't make uh, um, pain on the skin or don't make uh, injuries on, on the skin, which with other plastic, after rubbing a few times, you have an, an, an pain on, or pain an injury on, on the skin. So be careful with the kind of plastic you use in, in therapy tools. Well, uh, normally plastic is not a cold thing. It gets very uh, quick warm with the friction on, on the body. So it's very difficult to to, to find the difference between the hand and the therapy tool. And the durability is also very long. Plastic don't uh, get old. Uh, the hygiene is very easy and the price is normally low. In, in um, comparison with metal, where metal is cold and seems like a ch ch chirurgical instrument and maybe the patient says, oh, is he cutting me or something like that? 
So this in spear or, or colorate or not metallic things in space more, uh, more confidence than it's something like, like metal be. And normally also the price will be very high in metal. Wood is very, it looks very nice, but the durability and the hygiene is very difficult to, to manage with it because uh, wood will absorb systems and then to release this also with disinfection products, it's not easy. So what are the advantages of instrumented tool? Well, it maintains its form in all its time. So when we are making a specific grip on, on, on torsion or you're using it, well, with the hand, we have a lot of joints that we have to manage to control and to be stiff. And this is very difficult. So the, the tool don't deformate it. So we can catch or, or, or fix a muscle or tissue and mobilize it without any problem. Also, we don't not fatigue because the, the tool gives us uh, a longer arm that increases the, the force or with a very, very less force. We have a high input and especially in sports where we have very strong athletes, it's very easy to treat them. We have a good, very, very good um, experience with Olympic uh, um, uh, athletes, especially in, in, in gymnastics. And also with football players from first Liga and especially in South America, they are very impressed about the results and they don't want to be treated again only with hands. They prefer it to be uh, with instruments. Also the orthopedic deformation I told you about, if you have a rhythmostosis in your hand, the therapist, it will be very difficult to, to treat well the patient. So it allows you to treat better your patient and also to make in specific contact uh, or specific treatment of a specific tissue in this um, imagine we see a tool which allows us a specific mobilizing of one vertebral body, which is very difficult to do with your fingers because you have to use your thumbs and you have to make a lot of force. It's very difficult. But if you use a tool, um, once it's like a balance, you feel a, a very few disbalance. You feel, feel it quite better. And also the contact is very concrete. You don't using your, your extremities of your fingers, you're using your hands, so you can make a lot of force without limit of time. And you can mobilize very exactly the, the, the vertebral body in rotation, slight side bending, lateral flexion, and decrease the compression of the vertebral discs for itself. So uh, the biggest problem that the therapist has to use in therapy tool, they say, oh, my hands are the best tool. I say, okay, it's the best uh, because they say I can feel with my hands and with the therapy tool, I don't can feel. So <laughs> let's see if it's real or not. In my impression with the therapy tool, you can feel better than only using your hand. And I say, then only using. Uh, when you're using your hand with a the therapy tool, then is when you feel better than only using your hand. And I will explain you why. First of all, when you compress or when you make applicate any kind of technique, first thing that you do is compress all your skin, all your tissue and your fingers. The part with, our, with, with them you apply, your technique is normally also the part with, with the one you feel uh, the restriction or any kind of dysfunction in the tissue. So you're using the same part to feel and to, to applicate the technique. So, what is in your fingers and what is in your finger uh, uh, lips? Uh, they are all the uh, um, uh, <laughs> sensitive uh, nerves that gives you the information about what is happening. But when you compress for a long time your, your tissue, you will <clears throat> over exercise in the nerves and they will adapt. And after the time, you don't feel nothing. That's when you make a long compression or you're making too much force after time you reduce your input of information so you lost sensibility if you make something very uh, superficial like this okay then you will be a sensitivity for a more long time but when you go a little bit inside the tissue uh, in a quick way you reduce your your sensibility but what happens when you're using a therapy tool a relaxed hand feels more than a stiff hand or compress it hand. So the therapy tool once uh, allows you with my mouse, okay. The hand is over the tool, but still in contact with the, the skin. The tool is which is transmitting the force. So it's like you have, instead of five fingers, you have six fingers and the sixth finger is that uh, which is making the compression and moves the skin. But your relaxed hand is on the, the skin and on the body of the patient and, and any time can feel what happened because it's relaxed and not stressed. 
And while the um, therapy tool is very stiff, it transmits all kind of vibration through the hand where you're making the force on, on, the, on the patient. And you're making the force with this part and the rest of the hand is feeling the vibration on the tool. So the vibration and the information that gives you a stiff tool which transmit and increase uh, the information in combination with the other hand, which is on the skin, on, on the patient, both together give you more information than only using your, your hand. And this is what increases the sensibility using a, a tool. This is very important, especially when we are talking about fascias, uh, especially in the superficial fascia, there are normally uh, some irregulation and you feel it like, well, if you go with the hand over, you don't feel it so well. And when you go over with the, the tool, and, and sliding over the, the skin. First, you feel like a vibration that's like something is not, uh, well, um, oh, how do you say? It's not, ooh, the word, mm, regular, mm, something irregular. It's like, instead of this, it's like, like this, and you go glug, 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 over it. Mm. We feel it in the tool. And also the speed, when some uh, is, is a restriction of movement, you feel your, 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 the tool slides over the skin quite well, and then whack, it, it stops on having restriction of movement, then it goes again well. And also the hyperania, you see, you see in this restriction area is higher. So you have in visual input of what, uh, where the restricted area, and also you feel it with the tool. When you're using creams or oil, you don't have this information. So you lost uh, uh, quite important information when you're using this on a tool. And when uh, a doctor is able to use tools to make an operation, and using gloves, <laughs> he has enough sensibility in his hand to, to make it, even if you see what is happening, but you have to feel when you stretch the tissue, when you cut this uh, tissue. So if a doctor is able to do it, I think that the physical therapy therapist will be also uh, able to use a tool and to increase his uh, effects on, on the human body. Oops, I got too fast. Okay. What does the use of tools bring us? So the transmission of force, the Therapy tools allows you to, uh, with a less force from the therapist, have a bigger input in the patient. Mm -hmm. That's increased the resistance of, of the treatment of the therapist, so we can work for a longer time. And also on uh, mechanics effects, it's higher speed, we can make it very quick uh, without damage on, on our hands. This makes it a bigger inertia. If you go very fast and move something very fast, we move it quite more than we make it slow because the tissue comes back to its position. But if we go very quick, we can move it uh, more. And also the heat that we reproduce it when we're making high input is uh, bigger than, than we're using the hand. Hmm? So also all the things with traction, friction, and pressure will bring us more, uh, more we will be better with, uh, with the tools. And also all the special grips that we have to use. What I said that the, the tool maintains the position is very easier to do with a tool than with a hand. And uh, it maintains and improves. It makes more sensibility our hands and the comfort for the uh, therapist. It's all very important. What's about scientific evidence, hands versus therapy tools. So I let you hear a link that you will see, especially well, in the next day, I think that this channel will put the, the video on, on YouTube. So you can uh, see it with <laughs> later. And there you will find uh, all the articles that I find, uh, especially about the using of tool and the increase of effectivity. But I can transmit to you all my experience with uh, <clears throat> athletes of first levels, Olympic um, athletes, and well, also in, uh, 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 tennis profis, especially in women. Um, we have a lot of experience and all day, once they have proved it, they don't want to change. And remember that the absence of evidence is the evidence of absence, because how I said, tools and therapy are something quite new, even if it's 3,000 years ago, but uh, while there are only few people using tools and therapy, the evidence about this is also a small one, and people sometimes think ah, if there's no evidence, there's nothing real, but I can show you that's working very well. So what is necessary uh, to, to use tools? One, first, <laughs> learn about fascia. You have to know how fascia works. Um, well, all the 
techniques that are increasing or decreasing the, the effects on, on therapy. And you have to learn how to use the tools. It's not you go to the shop and buy a tool and then I, I'm no manual uh, instrumented therapist. No? no, you have to really know to use it. And so when you instruct it, you, have, you can make an optimal use and then you can uh, make an evolution of, of this kind of treatments. Hmm? Because if you're not making a training, you have to make trial and error like I do because I developed my own technique. And like all techniques, you have sometimes you make it good and sometimes you make it don't so good. So you have to learn from your faults. And well, if you take a, a tool from the shop, maybe you need two or three years to make it like I. But I think that's worth to make it in a course on a weekend. I give you all the information how to use the tools. I explain you how and when to use the, the tools and so the next day you can start with all the experience and then you can increase uh, the efficiency of, of the use because we have to work safely. <laughs> we don't want uh, that you, well, especially I told you, you, you can make a lot more of force with the tool, but you don't have to make more force with the tool. So. Uh, the pain that you make to your patient is not more with the tool than with your hands. And sometimes the patient says to me, oh, this is painful what you're doing. Me. Okay, I let the tool and go on with my hand and say, oh, no, it's the same. It doesn't matter if you use the tool. And sometimes they say, I make more pain with my hand than with the tool. So the tool uh, allows you to work better, but it, uh, the tool is not to make more damage or more force. So we don't want to see uh, something like that when you're using your, your tools. Because if you are yeah, not a master in a technique, uh, you don't inspire confidence because if you are in front of your patient holding the tool and say, wait a minute, I have to think how to use it with you. And then the patient says, oh, you don't know how to use it or you, are, you don't, well, the patient feels when you are comfortable with, uh, using the technique. So if you don't feel that you are comfortable with the technique, you don't be relaxed. So. You have to give uh, well, uh, safety to your patient. And well, it rise in instrumental techniques. And uh, each time there are more uh, courses about instrumented uh, techniques. Um, now I'm in a master in, in the university, in the uh, University of Camilo José Pizera in Madrid, where I uh, make my instruction about the use of therapy tools in my method of uh, Richelli's uh, uh, fascia quadrant system. And well, there are also other tools which you can increase like cups, like flossing, like hooks, like washer, and many tools that uh, can be used in therapy to increase the effects. So we're going to the end. I will explain you some short summary. We must to know how the fascia is, or which alteration has the fascia. Only if we know really what alteration it has, we know how to use our tools and how to have the best input. We have to know how to explore, to know where we have to start our treatment. We must treat our patient as little as possible because if we reduce the, the strength or the, 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 uh, the elasticity in one part, maybe we can increase the, the force in one other part and this uh, balance again the, the body. So we only have to release the excessive tension in the specific area um, to make a balance of the body. If we treat too much, we disbalance again the body and have the same problem or maybe another bigger problem mm -hmm. with our patients. So very important to know what we do. Uh, we will um, restore this symmetry. This is very important and our patient has to be active. Yeah? We have to treat our patient with movement if it's possible and our patient has to work uh, each day some exercises to maintain elasticity and to increase the symmetry of his body. For the therapist, um, we unloaded the therapist's hand, so we have a longer life for our hand. Uh, we can choose the correct technique because we are not limited in time and force. The patient re uh, reduces the re recovery time are shorter than the recovery time is normally the results are better. And we increase also the patient satisfaction. So if a patient goes um, well in a very short time and it, this um, betterness maintains on a long time while well, you speak uh, very nice things about you and you will have more and more, more patients. Mm -hmm. Economy, the therapist uh, works life increase. So <clears throat> we can work <laughs> even if you are 100 years old. Huh? 
and decrease especially the healthcare spending. That's also if you're working with insurances, you can tell them, okay, I'm using one specific technique, I use therapy tools, which allows me to reduce the recovery time. So instead of spending 10 sessions of, of uh, therapy, uh, I normally uh, can manage uh, a problem in three uh, sessions. So the, the cost for the insurance will reduce it and this will be also a good thing for to, to recommend you and, and stand off another one. Uh, so the use of tools is useful for the patient and for the therapist. The correct choice of the tool is important. We told you, or I told you that we don't can use any kind of tool for any patient. And uh, training is decisive to proper and obtain the best results. So without training and without knowing how, how to do or how to use the tools, we don't also don't have the right effect. So I hope uh, I introduce you a little bit about how important is uh, the use of tools in manual therapy and especially in, in fascia release. So if you have any doubt now, uh, I will answer them. And if you maybe have a question in a few days, well, you have my website here. Uh, you have my email contact and also on Facebook. So uh, I will be a pleasure for me to answer you any kind of quick question right now or maybe in a few days when something in your head says, oh, it was all clear, but here I have it up. So I hope you enjoy my, my speak and you now I'm waiting for your question. Yeah, thank you, Stefan, for this wonderful insight on uh, instrumental assisted release of fascia. And I think uh, you have already spoken about a lot of things uh, that we had questions about, uh, like the sensibility was one of the things uh, that was very important to understand and to clear it that the sensibility might increase and how it acts as your sixth finger instead of being just an artificial touch. Uh, Stefan, although uh, most of the things have, have been uh, discussed, uh, now what I make through your discussion is uh, that fascia is always involved, uh, whatever the condition is. Uh, how to identify uh, if it is primary uh, involvement or a secondary involvement of the fascia? Well, this is an exploration where you have to, to find it out and especially uh, you have to listen the the the, the patient is who indicates you the, the alteration this is why i told you you have to uh, use a lot of movements different movements and standing and sitting in lying position okay. make a lot of uh, different movement lateral flexion torsion front flexion um, back flexion and the patient is who is, uh, tells you where you feel it's the stiffness. And if you make if you make ten different movements, and each time he said he feels um, a, a stiffness in his uh, lower uh, right back, well, you can be quite sure that the biggest alteration or the, the first or the the, the first uh, or the main uh, alteration of the fascia system is on his lower back uh, on the right side. When you release this area and see again the movement and they are all free and his pathology of his shoulder of his neck or disappears, you are quite sure that this was the, the main point and not the secondary point. Because if you change yeah. the secondary point, normally the release of, of, of this, uh, this function of, of his pathology is not so big. And also the stiffness he feels uh, every time in, on the same path don't uh, disappear as well as if you find the, the main point. Right. Uh, thank you, Stefan. And just one more thing, like uh, with my hand and with my fingers, uh, I have so much variety of uh, manipulations that I or mobilization that I can make on uh, the soft tissues. Mm -hmm. What additional benefit do these instruments give me? Is there is there something addition to what my hand can do? Uh, just just apart from the pressure or the length? Well, first of all, you can have hold for a longer time uh, constant pressure hmm? because right. sometimes, especially when you're working on, uh, on, 
on very stiff tissue when you're making too much compression you feel a pain after time and maybe you don't have uh, reached the release of the trigger point and you have to remove your your finger because you don't can hold it for more time this can be right. one reason second if you have to stretch the the, the, the tissue sometimes especially when there are uh, hair on on the skin it can be painful with the hand but when you're using a tool they 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 make it by another way and it's not so painful no, on, on, they don't feel that you are stretching the, the hair it's not so painful right. and also especially on on stretching the skin the contact or especially when you are well the hand after time you can sweat a little bit then it's not dry and then it slides again over so but the tool don't sweat and it maintains its dryness and it's better to to grip the the skin and, and stretch it right uh, uh, Stefan, I could see four different types of tools, uh, mm -hmm. and I suppose that uh, they would be having different functions. So mm -hmm. can, can you summarize a little bit about the different uh, functions that each of the tool has? Yes, we have one. Well, I have one tool. Let me see if I have one here. Just a second. Well, I don't have all here, but I have the primary tool here. You can see it. Well, this yeah. is a tool which allows you most, well, 90% of all the techniques that you do normally in manual therapy. Hmm? Your hand is all the time over the tool, but allows the contact of the tool with the patient and allows also the contact with the, the hand. So the, it's not something like I'm doing something like that without contact. <laughs> so my hand is ever in contact with, with the skin. So I don't lose. And it's still manual therapy because the patient comes for the, to you for a uh, receive in manual therapy so it's not nice that you make something like that he he wants to feel his hand or your hand on on the body so you still have the hand on the body so you feel everything but the force is transmitted by by the th therapy tool so also the mechanic efforts you can it's not the same to slide only like this way when you're doing it with this movement you press or stretch more stronger the tissue than if you do it only like like this right. and and you, how I said, you can, if you see when it goes this way up and down, if I use an angle from more than 45 degrees, it goes forward. And if I use a dig from a lo uh, lower 45 degrees and I go up, it goes backwards. So right. I have to change only the angle. I can go in one direction or in another direction. And I can go front, right, left, in another direction or without changing my, my position. It allows a lot of more mobility working with the patient. If you see it, this is like a dump or like, right. like this. So I can yes. use the hook the outside for, for making a movement to me instead of from, from me. So I can work holding with one hand the arm and go over and make my, my friction. And I can go in direction. I can also use the hook to fix a muscle or, or tissue and then make my movements fixing the, 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 the tissue in one oh. specific uh, okay. area. And I also can go with a big area about a muscle to decrease or making a big compression. So this tool also really allows you about 90% of all the things that you can do with your hand with a better effectivity. The other one which looks like or which I explained is for, for, the, for the spine, especially to have also an, a diagnostic because you can feel exactly where's the most stiffest yes. part the spine yes. then make mobilizing on one specific area normally you do it with cross hands about and then mm -hmm. you're moving three or four vertebra and stand on only one and also you can make a massage uh, on both sides or you meant sliding on both sides on the same time with the same pressure and then you can see if it on the right side or the paravertebral muscles of the right or left side are more stiffer or not because you see that the, uh, the tool slides easier from one side from the other side. If you're doing it with the hand because they are not connected, it's more difficult to feel some restriction more in one part and, or another one. And then we have two more. One is like, like in cross that you use specific for cross friction and uh, small area like in epicondylon um, uh, muscles or very uh, small uh, tissue or tendons. Okay. And then the, the Dino, which is very uh, well to make fascia release with movement because it's a small tool, or in the hand, and you can move the body and you can go over it. So it allows a lot of mobility. And this is how yes. many tools that I, I use in my yes. therapist.
Thank you. Thank you, Stefan, for sharing this information with us and uh, a great piece of knowledge today. Uh, but I still feel by the end of the session, we still feel uh, a lot more to be learned about it. And uh, we would definitely join you uh, with courses on uh, these manual techniques. And we mm -hmm. hope that uh, we meet again and learn more. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Welcome.